Next on Winning with Wisdom with Dr. Nasser Siddiqui. You gotta walk like you got it. You gotta talk like you got it. You gotta dance like you got it. You gotta praise God like you got it. You gotta shout like you got it. You gotta act like you got it. Now that's faith. Welcome to Winning with Wisdom, the anointed teaching ministry of Dr. Nasser Siddiqui, stricken with an incurable disease and then miraculously healed by the power of God. The powerful ministry of Dr. Nasser Siddiqui is equipping God's people with wisdom principles to be successful in every area of life, marriage, family, business, and more, touching the world, touching lives, touching you. This is Winning with Wisdom with Dr. Nasser Siddiqui. Hello and welcome to Winning with Wisdom. I'm Dr. Nasser Siddiqui. I am so excited that you have joined us today. It's an incredible program. I was waiting a long time to share this revelation. Today, um, I've got some powerful teaching for you. As I share a portion of my message on how to reap your harvest, I'm not just talking about sowing, I'm talking about reaping. You know, 2 Corinthians 9.10 says, God provides seed for the sower and bread for the eating, will also provide and multiply your seed sown. Another way of saying this is God will multiply your resources for sowing. In other words, you'll be sowing for more than one area of income. This is so exciting. God is a multiplier. He has principles to to multiply your seed so that you can reap your harvest. Do you know when you sow a single kernel of corn that your first harvest yields 900 kernels? Is God in the multiplication business or what? Oh yes. Today I'm going to teach you uh, one of the most important components of reaping your harvest and that is faith. Faith is the nutrient that takes your seed to 30, 60, and 100 fold, causes it to grow. The Bible says in Mark 11:22, Jesus replying and said to them, have faith faith in God, or as I like to say, have the God kind of faith. I'll have more on that in today's message, How to Reap Your Harvest. It's part of my series, Faith That Brings You. Right now, I want to take you to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and to Impacting Your World Christian Center as I share a portion of my message today on how to reap your harvest. Then I'll be right back to pray. And now, today's vital teaching from Dr. Nasser Siddiqui. Words don't move mountains. Faith released through words moves mountains. That's why he says, but believes in his heart and does not doubt at all what he says. Uh, faith has to be in those words. Uh, saying is the number one action of releasing your faith. Talking like it's already done. Now, you can have what you uh -huh. You can have what you say. All right, now, watch this, watch this. Here it comes. Whosoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt it all in his heart. I said, Lord, are you telling me that my words full of faith can take a real mountain and move it to a real sea? He said, yeah. By the way, I'm not telling you, Jesus is telling you. So if you don't think this is true, rip out that page because they're those letters in red. I said, Lord, how can faith-filled words move a mountain to the sea? And the Lord said, how do you think the mountain got there? <laughs> faith-filled words brought the mountain. God spoke it. He believed it. Mountain showed up. You believe it. You speak it. Mountain got to go. If faith-filled words brought the mountain, faith-filled words will move that mountain. And I got news for you, no demon in hell can stop it because when you believed in your heart, spoke with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. He could not stop your salvation. He cannot stop your healing. He cannot stop your harvest. If he could have stopped it, he would have stopped your salvation. Are you getting a hold of this? Faith-filled words will move that mountain into the sea. Now, he says, uh -huh, remember he says, operate like God. Believe what you speak. Believe what you speak. Then he says, uh, and it will be done for him. But let's deal with the doubt issue because I want to make sure we cover that doubt. Otherwise, we've got a problem here. Uh, to keep your finger here. Go to James chapter 1, verse 5. 
James chapter 1, verse 5. I told you, you weren't going to need a car to come home tonight. You're going to be flying out of here. <laughs> My brother, I need you to give me a hand for a second. What's your first name? Terrell. Terrell. Terrell, come up here. Stand right here, Terrell. Stand right there, right there. All right. Did you find James chapter 1, verse 5? Say amen. James chapter 1, verse 5 says this, uh-huh, if any of you is lacking wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives liberally upon approach, uh-huh, verse 6, uh, but it must be in faith, not doubting, not wavering, for he who doubts is tossed to and fro like the wind. Look at verse 7, for truly let that person uh, not even imagine he will receive. Amen. Now watch this. At the end of this service, like at the end of all the services, we take an offering for our ministry, and it goes to help us get on television around the world. So my brother here, what is he supposed to do? He writes on the envelope what he's believing God for, right? Everybody say, number one. Number, one. number two, he prays and asks God. God speaks to him where? Purpose in your? And he asks God, what should I sow? And he does that. Amen. Then he obeys. Everybody say, obey. Then what does he do? He releases his seed, right? He says, I receive. Now, at that moment, everybody say, at that moment. Yeah. At that moment, in the spirit realm, the harvest is immediately released. The moment he said, I receive, in the spirit realm, here comes the harvest. Every day, he's getting closer. Pastor, oh, pastor, it's been a month, pastor. I don't think this is working, pastor. Watch, watch, watch. Where was the harvest? Here was the harvest. Oh, did he say he didn't think it was working? Did he get into doubt? Whoa! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't even think you will receive anything from God. He who doubts will do without. Doubt is the enemy of your harvest. You cannot afford to doubt. Thank you, my brother. Are you getting a hold of this? Now go back to Mark 11. Mark 11. You cannot afford to doubt. If you enter the realm of doubt, uh, you will lose your harvest. Doubt is the enemy of your harvest. It is the enemy from receiving from God. Now go to Mark 11, 24. Hmm. Everybody say, oh yeah, I'll tell you now. I'll tell you now because I may forget later on. Everybody say, you sow, sow. By, giving, by giving, but you reap, reap. By, saying, by saying, my tongue, my tongue is, is my Sickle. Sickle. That's how you reap. You sow by what? Giving. You reap by what? Saying. Your tongue is your? Mm, now you got it. Your tongue is your suckle, your sickle. Your tongue is what's going to bring your harvest in. Now, look at verse 24. Here we get, now it gets heavy. Hmm. Verse 24. Here we go. For this reason, now we finally find out why did Jesus talk about mountains. Now we find out. He doesn't want you to move no mountains. He was trying to teach faith. That's why he says in verse 24, For this reason I'm telling you, what are you telling us, Jesus? For this reason I'm telling you, whatsoever you ask for in prayer, what? Oh, everybody look up here. The translators did it again. The word believe that is written in your Bible comes from the Greek word pisto, pisto. The word faith is the word pistis. Every reference of pisto or pistis in the New Testament in the Greek never says the word believe, but says the word believed. So put a D on the end. Once you put a D on the end, everybody look up here. Everybody say, believe. Duh. No, you didn't move your head. You're not doing it right. We got to do this again. All right, are you ready? Believe. Duh. One more time. 
believed. Over here, one more time. Believed. You're looking so funny. <laughs> now read it the way it was originally written. Let's read it the way it was supposed to be written. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatsoever you ask for in prayer, believe, duh, that you receive, duh, and you will have it, duh. <laughs> Until you believe, duh, you will not receive, duh. And when you believe, duh, and you receive, duh, my Bible says you will have it, duh. Now, now, I know we make a joke out of this, but why is this so important? All right. Go to James 2.17. See, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. Let's do it so we get results. Can I hear an amen? amen. Now, look at this. James 2.17. James 2.17. Once you're there, say amen. amen. So also faith, uh-huh, that's the word pistis, faith. Everybody say believed. Believe so also believed if it does not have what? Works. works. I told you yesterday the word works is the word ergon, E-R-G-O-N, corresponding actions of obedience, corresponding actions. So therefore, also believed if it does not have corresponding actions of obedience is what? Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Too many Christians are operating with dead faith. And they're getting mad at the prosperity preachers. They're getting mad at the pastors. They're getting mad at God. They're getting mad at the Word because it ain't working in their life. And they say, this stuff ain't working. I see other people prospering, but I'm not prospering. You know why? Because they don't understand what faith is. Faith is believed. Watch. I meet Christians all the time, and I say, uh, 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 have you got faith? Have you got faith for your healing? I got faith. I got faith. I know that I know that I know God will heal me one day. I got faith. I am believing for my healing. I am believing for my harvest. But wait a minute. Faith isn't believing. Faith is what? Believe. Now listen to me. If faith is believed, then there will be different corresponding actions. As long as you're believing for a future event, that is not faith. Every, every place, pistis or pisto was written in the Bible, it was not future event. It was always past tense. It was already done. In the sight of God, it's already done. And so when do you get it already done? You don't believe you receive when you see it. You believe you receive when you pray. So the moment you pray, from that moment, it is already done. Because you have believed. Let me demonstrate. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. i got to show you this. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 17. Without faith, your seed won't become a harvest. So you better know what faith is. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Faith is the nutrient that causes your seed to grow. This is the story about a lady called Hannah. Everybody say Hannah. Hannah. Hannah couldn't get a baby. She tried everything to get a baby, nothing working. So now she goes to the prophet Eli, and she says, Eli, Eli, please pray for me. I need to have a baby. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 17. Then Eli said, go in peace. Uh -huh. May the God of Israel grant your petition which you've asked of him. Verse 18. Hannah said, let your handmaiden find grace in your sight. So she went her way and ate her countenance no longer sad. Now everybody look up here. How many of you know, absolutely for sure, you cannot get pregnant eating lunch? 
Am I right? She didn't go to bed with nobody. All she did was have lunch. She went and had lunch. But the Bible says her countenance was no longer sad. You know what that means? This is the way she's going to have lunch. I'm having a baby. I'm having a baby. She walking like she got it. She talking like she got it. She's smiling like she got it. If you got it when you prayed, how come you ain't celebrating? How come you ain't praising God? How come you ain't rejoicing? How come you ain't dancing? Because the Bible says if you don't got it, you ain't going to get it. So you got to got it before you get it. So the moment you got it, now you're going to get it. And if you got it, you ought to act like you got it. She didn't smile when she got pregnant. She smiled when she believed the word. I can tell, my brothers and sisters, I can tell at the end of every service that I've been here, when we take the offering for our ministry, I can tell who's going to get their harvest and who isn't. Because the ones that are shouting like they got it, the ones that are dancing, like they got it. The ones that are running, like they got it. The ones that are praising God, like they got it. You see, when you got it, you're about to get it. That's faith. Amen. Did you get it? You're ever going to get it. And if you don't got it, you ain't going to get it. But if you got it, now you're about to get it. But if you got it, you better dance uh, like you got it. That's called corresponding action to your faith. Amen? See, my brothers and sisters, <laughs> we better know what faith is. Amen? We better do it right. So what is faith? Faith is believe. How do you know? I asked the Lord one day. I said, Lord, how do you know? By the way, when you got it and you act like you got it, you confuse the heck out of the devil. How can the devil stop you getting something you already got? Did you get it? So I said, Lord, how do I know I got faith over an issue? How do I know? How do I know I got faith for healing? How do I know? Here's the answer. Here's the answer. How many of you, you you've given your life to Jesus? Lift up your hand. How many of you can remember when you gave your life to Jesus? You got a stamp on your passport that says admit one to heaven? You got a letter in the mail that gives you visa to go to heaven? But how many of you know that you know that you know that you know you're going to heaven? Watch this. Faith is when you can pinpoint a moment in time when you got it. Not when you're going to get it, but when you got it. If you tell me you got faith for your healing, I'm going to ask you this question. Can you pinpoint a moment? I didn't say when it manifested. I didn't say when the pain went away. I didn't say when the symptoms left you. I did not say when you were moved uh, by what you see. I said, can you pinpoint a moment in time when you prayed? Because that's when you got it. Now that's faith. Are you getting something tonight? You ever turn the thermostat in your house because you want to change the temperature? And you turn the thermostat, and one second later, there is no change. So do you go back and turn it again? As far as you're concerned, it's done. Am I right? Well, the thermostat was changed when you prayed. From that moment on, it's done. You gotta walk like you got it. You gotta talk like you got it. You gotta dance like you got it. You gotta praise God like you got it. You gotta shout like you got it. You gotta act like you got it. Now that's faith. Are you getting a hold of this? 
Anybody done any fishing in this house? Have you ever done any fishing? Lift up your hand nice and high. You take your fishing rod, you throw it out into the water, the line is loose as a goose. And all of a sudden, the line goes tight. Bing! What does that mean when the line goes tight? You got it! Can you see it? Nope, but you got it. Is this a good time to let go of the rod? There is always a time frame from the time the line goes tight. All you got to do now is pull that baby in. That's all you got to do. You got it when you prayed, so all you got to do is pull that baby in. You just keep dancing. You just keep smiling. How do I pull it in? I just keep thanking God and thanking God and thanking God and thanking God. I got it. Hallelujah. And the devil can never stop it. Is there anybody in the house that is believing to be saved? <laughs> That's a silly question. You're either saved or you're not. And when you spoke it, Jesus is Lord, you believe. <laughs> if you ain't believing for your salvation, you ain't believing for your healing. <laughs> You ain't believing for your harvest. You either believed, duh, or you didn't. Amen. Are you getting a hold of this? Yes. Stop being moved by what you see. Yes. Start being moved by what you believe. Yes. You got to start walking, talking, and acting like it. The world celebrates a touchdown when it happens. We celebrate before it happens. Yes. Faith is a smile. Why? Because if you really believe, duh, how come your face isn't been notified? <laughs> Amen? I can tell people in faith, they're always smiling. Why? They got it. They got it. Faith is and always will be past tense. It's never future tense. It's always past tense. Well, I hope you have the God kind of faith, uh, that your faith is past tense, that you have believed, duh. <laughs> faith is the vital nutrient to reap your harvest. To release faith, you're not going to see it. It's not a future event. It is always believed. Uh, the word pistis in Greek, uh, faith, literally means be firmly convinced, firmly persuaded. Are you firmly persuaded that you receive your harvest, not when it shows up, uh-uh, when you pray, when you sow that seed, that's when you receive your harvest. That's when you believe you receive and you act accordingly. Jump up and down and shout. <laughs> I'm so limited in what I'm able to share with you. There's so much more to this teaching that I want to get into your spirit. It's part of my series, Faith That Brings Victory. It's available for a gift of $30 or more. There are six CDs, full, powerful teaching, nuggets of wisdom that you saw today. And for a gift of $40 or more, I want to show in the Camp Companion book, Kingdom Principles of Financial Increase. Just call the number on the screen right. Here's my announcer to tell you more. Financial victory that reaps a bountiful harvest is always won first in the spirit realm through faith. Faith then comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So faith is one of the main ingredients to receive all the promises of God. When you have the God kind of faith, you believe what you say will come to pass. In his newest six CD teaching series, Faith That Brings Victory, Dr. Nasser Siddiqui shows you God's plan for your victorious harvest, how to move into the spirit realm, how to exercise your faith, and much more. This vital teaching on faith that brings victory is available on six CDs for your ministry gift of $30 or more when you call toll-free 1-800-947-3660. Write to Wisdom Ministries or visit wisdomministries.org. For your gift of $40 or more, you'll also receive Dr. Siddiqui's powerful book, Kingdom Principles for Financial Increase. Order today. 
Don't miss this opportunity to learn more about the kind of faith that brings victory to your life. Six CD series for $30 or more, or for $40 or more, I'll throw in our Kingdom book, Kingdom Principles of Financial Increase. Call that number. I'll get it to you right away. 2 Corinthians 9.10 says that God makes all grace, all favor come to you in abundance, everything you need. God is able to provide for you in abundance, and He gives you seed for sowing into ministries like this one. I encourage you to pray and ask God what seed to sow, and believe God for your harvest, for in the same chapter, it says, for he who sows sparingly reaps sparingly, he who sows bountifully reaps bountifully. If you're believing God for a bountiful harvest, ask him what bountiful seed should you sow, the right measure of seed today, and then you believe, duh, you receive, duh. So then you start rejoicing. I want to share with you about faith. I want to get these materials into your hands as quick as possible. Call the number on the screen. And then we want to sow to you. I know you've believed, duh for your harvest, which is wonderful, but we want to sow into you our magazine. Free gift to you contains amazing stories of God's working miracle power, and I know it'll bless you. So call the number on the screen, go to our website, ask for your free copy of the Wisdom magazine. We want to bless you with that as you sow your seed and believe duh for your harvest. Share your prayer request with me. Call our prayer line, visit our website, drop me a note. I love to hear your praise reports, so send them to me as well. Now I'm going to pray, just like I said I would. Well, let's come into agreement. You've sowed your seed, you've released your faith, you've believed, duh, and after we pray, you start rejoicing like it's so. I thank you, Lord. I release my faith for the harvest, for the need that they're praying for. I release my faith that that need is provided, that bountiful harvest is provided. It's coming to them now in the name of Jesus. We're children of faith. We believe we receive when we pray, and we're going to seal it, Lord, with Thanksgiving. Lift up your hands and start to thank him like you got it. This is Dr. Nasser Siddiqui saying it's been wonderful to teach the word at Winning with Wisdom. I look forward to see you next week. Go tell a friend. Join us again next time and tell a friend to watch Winning with Wisdom with Dr. Nasser Siddiqui, Tulsa, Oklahoma. 